Today we are looking at wedges and more specifically wedge lofts. Yes, I have my wedges here. We're gonna talk about how many wedges you carry, the advantages and disadvantages of maybe carrying two, three, or four wedges. But we're gonna really specifically look at what lofts you should have depending on how many wedges you carry. Now I will say stay till the end because at the end I'm gonna flash up a wedge chart that's gonna outline or perhaps recommend what lofts you might carry based on the loft of your pitching wedge and how many wedges you have in the bag. Let's go. Guys, if you are new to the channel, then go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that little notification bell just so that you don't miss out on anything. And I've got a question for you guys. What wedges are you currently carrying? So what brand, what loft, how many wedges? Drop that down below. Okay, so we're talking about wedge gapping and a good system, a good setup from a wedge loft standpoint is gonna allow us to cover a good range of distances. We're not gonna have huge gaps in between wedges or in between clubs inside of sort of, let's say 120 or 100 yards, however far you hit your pitching wedge. It's also gonna allow us to cover a variety of shots from around the greens. We're gonna be able to hit high soft ones and anything else for that matter as well. If we're able to check all those bases, then it sounds like we probably have a pretty good setup. If you have huge distances, let's say more than 10 yards in between wedges, your loss might be a little off, the gapping might be off, we might need to make a little adjustment. Okay, let's start with some basic terminology. So most sets you'll have a pitching wedge in it and that might have a P or a PW or something like that depending on the manufacturer. Now traditionally the loft of that club was 48 degrees but what's happened over the course of time is those wedges have become stronger and stronger. So it's not uncommon now to see a 43 degree pitching wedge in the bag which that used to be stronger than a 9 iron. Now, let's talk about the next club, which is a gap wedge or an approach wedge, depending on the, the company and manufacturer that we're talking about. Now, typically that loft would be say 52 degrees. Now those have gotten stronger as well as the pitching wedge has gotten stronger. And really that club didn't exist many, many years ago. It's had to come into play now because that pitching wedge has gotten so strong. The gap between the pitching wedge and the sand wedge became so great we needed to throw another club in. Let's look at the sand wedge. So a sand wedge, depending on the manufacturer, it might have an S, it might have an SW, it might just have the amount of degrees on the club. Traditionally, that was 56 degrees. Now, that's anywhere between, say, 56, 55, 54 degrees, perhaps even 53. And then we have the lob wedge, which that's traditionally around 60 degrees. Now we have those sometimes bent to 59. You can buy 58s. So we have those four wedges and you might carry, well, I hope not one, but at least two, three or four wedges in your bag. So with the strengthening of that pitching wedge, moving it from, say, what it was traditionally, 48 degrees, all the way now down to 43 degrees, it's created this dilemma. Like I said, that we had to throw the gap wedge in to fill that gap, to minimize the difference between the pitching wedge and the sand wedge. Now that creates a problem because we're only allowed to carry 14 clubs. So people tend to either carry 
extra wedges or they carry extra fairway woods and hybrids. For me personally, I carry four wedges. My wedges, I have my pitching wedge actually set at traditional loss. I have it set at 48 degrees. Then I have my gap wedge at 52, my sand wedge at 56, and I carry a 60 degree lob wedge. Now that's probably not the perfect setup for everybody. Like I said, those pitching wedges, even in the current players versions of wedges, they're typically around 46 degrees these days. Now, I don't recommend that you necessarily weaken that. I think that there's ways to find the right gap. But as I said, people tend to want to go with more fairway woods, more hybrids, but that might not always be the best option. Let's take a look at why. Okay, now remember we have a 14 club limit. We'll take the putter out of the equation. That gives us 13 other clubs to choose from. Now, bear with me here. If you hit your pitching wedge, let's just say 120 yards. And if you don't hit it that far, it doesn't matter. And if you hit it further than that, again, it doesn't matter. We'll just use that as, a, as an example. So your pitching wedge that goes 120 yards, if you only carry two wedges, say pitching wedge and sand wedge, you essentially have two clubs to cover 120 yards. Now, typically someone that hits their wedge 120 yards might hit their driver 240. So that gives us another 120 yards and that gives us 11 clubs to cover that 120 yards. So we've got 11 clubs and two clubs. A little bit of a mismatch, especially when you consider how many shots you probably hit from inside 120 or 100 yards. So keep that in mind. If you're someone that's throwing in fairway woods, hybrids, so on and so forth, and you've got multiple fairway woods and multiple hybrids, how often do you use all of them? Then think about how often you're inside of 120 yards. If you've got a pitching wedge that goes 120 yards and you hit, you hit your sand wedge, let's say 85, 90 yards, that's a massive gap. I bet you you're probably good at your 120 yard shots and you're good at your 90 yard shots and everything else is super awkward. So my recommendation is perhaps you might look at dropping out one of the longer clubs and let's look at some of the benefits of adding extra wedges, whether you carry three or whether you're like me and carry four. I would absolutely love to be able to carry 15 clubs. Then it would make life a lot easier. I could keep the club that I substitute in and out is my hybrid and my three iron. Now I love my three iron and the hybrid's fantastic too, but there's no way I'm taking a wedge out of my bag. Again, like I said earlier, we need good distance coverage, good gapping in between, so on our full wedge shots, but we also need to be able to hit a variety of shots around the greens. Now, typically you're gonna compromise one or the other if you drop some wedges. So if I was to drop, let's say my gap wedge, for example, my 52, once I get around that range where pitching wedge is too much and I can't hit my 56 far enough, if I have to flight down a pitching wedge, it's gonna come in lower, it's gonna come in hotter, and if I have to get it to stop, it's not gonna happen. So I don't want that gap in my bag. Now, if you're somebody that goes the other way, you drop the most lofted club. So if I was to do everything and drop my 60 degree, I'm gonna lose some of the soft shots around the green. Again, that's not something I'm willing to compromise on. I want good distance coverage with all my wedges and I want to be able to hit a variety of shots. I don't want a strong sand wedge being my only option. Okay, so I'm going to flash up the wedge chart that I talked about right now. This is based on your pitching wedge loft. So take a screenshot or take a picture of this chart just so you can refer back to it. Now you're going to have to do some research in terms of what loft your pitching wedge is. So go ahead, jump on Google, do a little search, go to your manufacturer's website, find the club model that you're using, click on specs and there you'll be able to see what loft your pitching wedge is. Then you can jump over to the chart and once you've made a decision on whether you're going three wedges or four wedges based on your loft, there's my recommendation on the lofts that you might look at. Now, before you go out and buy some new wedges, bounce is also incredibly important. And we're not talking about that in this video. We'll talk about it in another video here in the near future. But for now, start to figure out what lofts make sense for your bag.
Alrighty guys, that is it for today. I hope this video was helpful in particular with understanding wedge gapping. Guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them down below. If you like what you saw, hit that like button. It does help me out a lot in terms of growing this channel and the more it grows, the more I can help you. Guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that as well. Hit the notification bell. And of course, until next time, good golfing.